What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the last edition of the Sunday Call-In Show for this season. We are switching over to the POS on Saturday after the Georgia Bulldogs host UT Martin. But we want to do one last send-off here on the Sunday Call-In Show. I'm Paul Meharry, joined, as always, by Jason Butt. Ben Choppy Bachman will be with us in a few. And, uh, you know, as we do every time, we want to know where you're watching us from. Put it in the YouTube comments. Let us know. We'll shout you out on the screen. And Jason, as always, right? We want their questions. Yep. That, that keeps the show going. You know, that's, so that's that's the goal, man. That's the goal. We're trying to get through one hour here, folks. The last one. Last week's show was amazing. It was it was awesome. Uh, but we will uh we'll try to top it for you guys. We'll try. We already got Rhett Womack in here saying, Go dogs, what's going on, Rhett? How are you? I see you, Eddie. I'll get to you in just a second, my man. Uh, Jason, how was your weekend? Oh, it's pretty low key. Uh, you know, got guy got to uh, catch up on some things that you know the day to day life you miss out on during the week. But you know what, we're here and we're ready, and we got one week uh, or less than one week till Georgia yeah. football kicks back yeah. off. Well, we had some we had some week zero action yesterday. Mm-hmm. We'll get into that a little bit. Touch on how USC is going to uh, just dominate college football. Well, that's what everybody's saying on uh, online right now. Also, Notre Dame looked pretty good, too. We'll talk about that. But before we get to that, Jason, I had my fantasy football draft today. I feel like I did pretty good. Okay. Uh, so when Travis Kelsey round one came back around to Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, so I feel, feel pretty so, good. So you're all about the RB0 Approach. Yeah, well, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go RB zero. Just worked out that way. We ended up getting Stevenson and then Justin Fields. So I mean, we we feel all right. Okay, we feel okay. I, I like Ramondre, still- man. I think he's gonna go nuts this year. So I think, so, I, I think yeah. you gotta you got if that's your running back, I think you're you're set. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the team yeah. looks okay. You know, uh, yeah. so let's bring in old Eddie from the A, and we're not talking Atlanta. We're talking Ackworth. Eddie, what's up, man? Can't hear you, Eddie. Can't hear you, Eddie. You got your uh, settings messed up. I'll remove you and come back in. Eddie's got a new mic. He's got a new mic. Uh, he asked what mic to get. He's got a little blue Yeti, so we'll get him in. Oh, we'll yeah, get him. blue Yeti. That's Yeah. No, oh, you got the you got the black Yeti. It's black, but it's blue. Yeah, like the brand. Yeah, thing. it's the blue. Yeah, it's just black. Speaking of tomato, tomato, week zero, Jason. I'm gonna yeah. be honest with you, man. It wasn't fun. <laughs> is it ever though? I mean, I feel like sometimes it is. I, don't I feel know. like sometimes it is. It, it was not fun, man. So you had USC versus San Jose State, which. We uh, couldn't watch unless you had the Pac-12 network, which I don't think any of us do. Do you have that, Jason? Were you able to watch the game? I don't have it. Um, yeah. Or, so. You know what? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't checked. Like, I, don't think I wasn't interested in that game, to be honest. And then I saw that San Jose State put up 28 or right. whatever it was. And so it's kind of like, okay, well, USC has the same whatever not great defense yeah, yet so again. It was, so It was uh, 21-14 at the half. Yeah. That intrigued me. That intrigued me, but it was late. So I went to sleep and they woke. I woke up to a 56 to 28 uh, victory for USC. Over under for that game was 66 for those counting at home. So they went yeah. well above that. Every other game, to my knowledge, went under Jason. So we talked about that with Eddie. Let me try to get him back yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. I think um I think that's big with the, the clock change this year. Right. I think, right. you know, early in the year, I think these first couple weeks as Vegas adjusts, I think smart thing to do is to hit these unders. I, I did have a buddy this weekend who uh, he hit the under in Notre Dame, obviously barely. Uh, I think it was 48 and a half and they totaled for 45. And then he hit the under and then combine it with the over in the USC game. So he was feeling pretty good. Uh, I went for a parlay this I went for a parlay and uh, lost on the first leg. So <laughs> that's the worst. That's always the worst. <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, Eddie, I see you. You look great. Your microphone on the on the streamyard is muted, though. It shows right there that it's muted. See if you can unmute it on the app itself, because I can't unmute you. You have to unmute it yourself. 
Let's bring on Andy Stowe. Andy, what's going on, man? Hey, guys. Um, and I have the Blue Yeti as well. Hey. <laughs> you have? Do you have the Blue Yeti, Eddie? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, you sound great. Awesome. Sorry. Working out a few kinks. I, I test run it with my wife earlier, and it seemed to work, and I blew it with you guys. So it's, no, it's all right. It's all good. It's just the last <laughs> show of the year. No big deal, Eddie. Not like we're trying to do a great send-off here or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You know? Um, I got Jason's opinion here, and we didn't really dive into it too much, but week zero, guys, I don't know. I don't know about it. It wasn't it, – I, I was wanting something, and I, I got football a little bit. You got it out of Vandy, Hawaii for the first half with their scoreboard that was being held up by cranes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the storyline of Week Zero. I, yeah. I don't know of anything else that really tickled uh, my football fancy there, my itch. <clears throat> Shoot, I thought the best game of the day was the Jacksonville State game. That was the best game, most competitive. Yeah. That was my second leg of my parlay, and then the last two crashed and burned. But <laughs> I actually had, yeah, I uh, I alt spread it uh, Jacksonville State plus three and a half. Uh, but uh, yeah, Should've taking it straight up. I know, but it didn't matter because yeah, yeah, I, it didn't matter. I, yeah, yeah, I just did a fun parlay. I didn't know really know anything about you know week zero and week one. It's it's such, such a crapshoot. I feel like when you're yeah. when you're trying to yeah. gamble because you really don't know. You, you're going solely off of last year and what you think is these teams look like with their rosters. So it's uh yeah, uh, week 2, week 3 we should know a lot more. We've got a lot more people joining up right now. Guys, let us know where you're watching from, put it in the comments, we'll shout you out here live on the screen. And then if you want to join up, Eddie and Andy, they've done so already. You just hit that link in the description. It'll send you into a virtual waiting room and then we can bring you on screen. If you're not if you're a little camera shy, that's all right, guys. Just go ahead and put your comments into the comment section on YouTube, and I'll make sure that we get to them. Uh, Brett Weimer, part of the family here on the show, says, let the Notre Dame hype begin. Going to be top 10 in next poll. I could see that. Notre Dame, I don't know if it, again, they I don't know if Navy's Navy. terrible. They, they yeah. played Navy. I mean, come on. But, hey, everybody, Eddie, I know you're saying that, but everybody and their mother – said Navy was the bet because Navy was going to run the ball. Yep. They're going to keep this thing close, and they pulled away. They beat them by 39. I thought they looked pretty good. I, I really they thought did. Sam Hartman looked good. I was surprised that he looked as good as he did. Well, that's they the did. difference right there, Sam Hartman. I think right. Notre Dame has a good quarterback, but, mm -hmm. I'm, but I think Eddie's spot on. It's Navy. Uh, new coach. Um, you know, I, I kind of get the sense that, or, or, or I am skeptical that Navy being as competitive as they have been, especially as they were kind of fading over these last few years under um, the prior regime, uh, you know, may, maybe this is kind of the end of that um, now that they finally switched coaches and are running the same system. And, and I think they didn't, they, didn't they hire one of his assistants. He was an assistant yeah. off of there. Yeah. I, I don't want a nepotism in the triple yeah. option. You don't, yeah. you don't go so, far from it. No. So I, I think, uh, I think you kind of got, you know, you got the old 1990s version of of Navy, the pre Ken. Uh, I'm not going to butcher his last name. Uh, years. Oh, oh yeah, Ken N. Ken yeah, Ken N. I'm gonna. But uh, you're getting the you know going back to before he took over. So uh, I guess Paul uh, uh, Paul Paul Johnson was George Southern, and then I think that's where I think Ken was there, and then went to. Navy. He was. Yeah, he was with them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that whole tree. I think that's gonna fade off and. You're probably you're you're getting a, you're getting an inflated Notre Dame win is the roundabout thing that I'm trying to say. But they did what they were supposed to do, right? I mean, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Hartman, like I said, they got a quarterback. And but Hart, yeah, Hartman looked good. I mean, that, really good. regardless of opponent, he looked good. Why yeah. did he not go to Alabama though? Like, why did he? Because didn't he have the offer to go to Bama? I believe so. I don't know. I don't know if he did or not. I, I would think that he did, considering what's going on there. But maybe he didn't want to go play for Saban. Maybe he's a a Catholic, he's got Catholic blood in him, and he wanted to go represent. Uh, you know, hey, don't Catholic. discount it. You could be right. I, you could be possibly. Right. That's, yeah, so that's the first thing you thought of. That's just funny. <laughs> I mean, don't you have to be Catholic to play for them? Don't you? No, oh, no, you don't have to be. No. You don't have to be. I think it's frowned upon if you're not. You're probably no. second or third string. You don't get to start if you're not. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, Rudy was Jewish, wasn't he? I don't. Rudy's yeah. a fake person, isn't he? <laughs> Rudy is very much real. I, I don't know if he was. I'm just saying that. Foster Moss says, uh, "What's up, guys? 
evening, Paul, JB, Andy, and Eddie from the A. What's going on, Foster? Uh, I see your comment, Willie Graham. I'm going to get to in a second. Uh, LS says uh, USC defense was comic relief. It would have been awesome, LS, if I could have watched the game. Uh, I, I Did you guys get to watch the game? I did. Wow. Ah. Well, you can stream it on YouTube, like just yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, there there are things that can be done if you want to watch a football game. You just well, have yeah, to do yeah. Them. I'm saying like legally, like uh, no, 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 no. I, I mine was legal, Paul. I paid for it. I don't know how, but it showed up, and I watched it on the. Well, what's your program. you have YouTube TV? Is that what that is? Yeah, how'd you get it? No, mine is through my uh, add-on package that I have with Xfinity, my sports Xfinity. package. Oh, like they were like people were just like posting it on YouTube, like they talk oh, about yeah. it on the forums. Yeah, so. Like there was um, a link on YouTube. Yeah, I should have I should have gone over to Reddit college football and, and hey, it. and you and you missed Bears half sack. That's what he had last night. That's what, what I was gonna bring up. He had, he, had. he had one tackle wow. and half sack. Uh so, oh he had one tackle. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought he had zero and a half. Okay. No, he one had he half. had one. Okay. Uh Alex is still in Columbia. Hope it's working out, Alex. Good to see you still are with us. Uh last week you were there too, so good to see everything's going well. <laughs> Anthony White says, uh, good evening, gentlemen. Hope y'all had a great weekend. Hey, you too, Anthony. You too. We appreciate that. Just Alex, hot. I see your question. I'm going to get to it, okay? That's a long, long-winded long question that we'll get to once we start talking dogs here. Uh, let's see here. St. Louis, Missouri for Robbie. He's ready out there. Roderick Robinson going to play this year? Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's going to have to. Uh, <laughs> All the running back yeah, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he has he has no choice to not want a three healthy, game. right? <laughs> yeah. So here's the question I wanted to touch back on, guys. Uh Willie Gray Jr. on the old Facebook says, What do y'all think about the new clock stay running rules? It does okay. I'm it I'm gonna say it doesn't really seem to have shortened the game. I feel like it has. I, I feel like those games were kind of moving. I thought Notre Dame went way point. faster. I mean, yeah. I'd have to – I don't know what the official time was. I guess we could look that up real quick. But I it felt like that, it was. Uh, Notre Dame was and Navy, when Navy had the ball in the fourth quarter, that thing was running. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. When, when Navy had their actual drive, the only drive they had all game, and you just like all of a sudden yeah. looked up and went, oh, it's four minutes left in the game. That's exactly what time I looked at it, too. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. That and why, then I watched. Why, why do we watch Ohio and San Diego? Why do we speed these games games up though? That drives me crazy. What, why? I mean, it's well, the same with baseball. We're fans. We want to sit down and watch it. You want to shorten the game? Stop going to commercial and playing those every five minutes. Okay, five I'll, minutes. I'll argue with baseball. I I got super frustrated with pitchers taking a minute and a half or whatever it is between pitches. So I am one hundred percent on board with that. Um, baseball. I actually the, the shortening of baseball, Eddie has been nothing but greatness i think in my no opinion. i agree with you there. i agree with you there there was a lot of bs going on you're right you're yeah. right about that jason no no doubt about it Go but ahead. college football there wasn't there wasn't bs like that uh there wasn't guys stepping out of the box and, and right. tightening uh wide receiver gloves you know right. and, and doing stuff like yeah. that true yeah. true it was two hours and 50 minutes so Th- that yeah. was the whole run that was a run time yeah Wow. wow kickoff time was at 241 and end of the game was 532 for 250. So that's a big difference. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, you're I mean, getting you, the only reason to do it is you're now. Yes, you, you're not going to for TV purposes. You limit the chance of a four to five hour game, which then cuts into the next game and, and uh, getting to and being able to get, you know, sometimes you, you know, you would have a, a game at a 730 game or eight o'clock game that you wouldn't get to until the second quarter. Exactly. So, so I think that helps. But also it, it's it's. The NFL has been doing this for however long it is, and yeah. I mean it's uh, like a military thing. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, it's and bad. it is it is crazy it how the NFL has it lined up, and then they just go right mm-hmm. into the four o'clock games, and then they're all yep. done before the the Sunday <laughs> night game. So I'm not opposed uh, for that reason. I I actually think it's uh, you know strategically it's good, and then of course I think like what is it the last two minutes or whatever like it still stops yeah, anyway. Still so. You still have that strategic aspect of it in college football, um, so so that that you know late in games that's still there. But uh, yeah, I'm not opposed to the the rule change. And, and like what we said at the very beginning, I think for gambling these first couple weeks, the under is going to be major. I would yeah. think yeah. just as as Vegas adjusts to this. Hey Andy, will you do me a favor and look and see if you can find the Bulldogs versus Samford run time last year? Because that game was super fast, and I want to say that that was probably two hours and fifty minutes. And that felt like it flew by because there's been many a times, guys, many a times on CBS where like you go to a buddy's house, 330 kick, 
you're not leaving his house until 7 45 8 o'clock oh yeah and that's yeah. that's that's leaving yeah. like all right the game's over shaking hands kissing babies out the door like you're, you're that, that also depends on the type of game you're watching whether it's run heavy or pass heavy right i mean sure obviously yeah, yeah. willie grace says I mean, uh, every death march is going to take a whole half yeah was it, it, the navy notre dame game is a perfect example of that navy's running the ball every play and the clock's yeah. just continuously running right so there you go. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I know it's stopping right, but I, I mean it's stopping with two minutes left. But you know what? I, you get my point. Yeah, it, it, I think the Willie's post is is uh, spot on though for some of these fourth quarters though. I mean with Georgia, mm-hmm. it's like when if they're up big and then it's just run, run, run. You're getting out. Your Saturday's free. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't mind that at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think in in, in, honestly, I tell you what, sports writers who cover college football are going to love this for that reason. Yeah, there's been many a game the that I've sat line. at a press box or like waited for the POS to start, and I'm like, "This game is over, dude. This game has been over. Can we please just stop this madness?" Maybe that will help. But what's going to suck though is I think when you look at a game that is like the you know LSU FSU game, I want as much action as I want yeah. as many plays in that game as I possibly can get. There's other games. UT Martin, Georgia, sure. You know, clock runs, it doesn't matter. But when it's a big time game, that's kind of, you know, that's where it's going to hit a little bit. You're going to see time running off that, I don't know, doesn't feel necessary. So maybe. Uh, I mean, that's also the middle of the game where you're not really paying attention to the, the, the time. You know what I mean? It's usually second, you know, last half of second quarter, fourth quarter is when you're really yeah. paying attention to the clock. It was two hours and 51 minutes. So wow. Was- same time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got that. Up. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I felt, I felt pretty good on that. And guys, remember, uh, Foster Moss even told us uh, Kirby and the coach agreed to cut that game short a little bit. I think they had a running clock or something like that. Yeah, at the end. yeah, yeah. they did. That's they right. Actually, ended, didn't they end the fourth quarter at like ten minutes, or didn't they? I think the game. Yeah, got we they might have started it at ten minutes. Yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, there was something like that. It was like a yeah. ten. I can't course. remember, but yeah. So that's how fast. And that was with a game sh- cut short. That's how fast uh, that Notre Dame Navy game went. Again, yeah. we had a team running the triple option, so that maybe skews that number a little bit, right, guys? That's uh, true. Yeah. Any other games on this week zero slate that you guys watched? Well, the the USC game it did reinforce that I think I will win the Heisman pick with Caleb Williams. Their defense is so bad. He's going. They're going to have crazy numbers, man. I think Caleb Williams will go four hundred, you know, three hundred and fifty, four hundred a game because their defense is horrible. Like they, if they lose two to three times, though, I don't know if they'll. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that, but I mean, no. I think he might hit five thousand yards this year, and I mean, and that's they're just going to be the defenses are so bad. So yeah, you were right, Jason, when you said the Pac-12 is dead and it's a horrible <laughs> conference. It is, but I just think there's going to be such inflated numbers. So I feel good about my about my pick. And for Ben, I know he's not here. Did you see that Dane tweeted? He was like. He was like, um, Bo Nix could win the Heisman going up against this USC defense. So, <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I did watch a little Ohio San Diego State that game. Oh, yeah, I did too, actually. The game was cool until the starting quarterback for Ohio just got absolutely obliterated in the first whole quarter and got taken out of the game. They put the back up and he threw three picks. Uh, yeah, that was the first leg of my parlay that lost. So, you so that was my that was the third leg. I had Ohio. Yeah, I had Ohio all right. That. Yeah, so that's what, what I was about, checking. Uh, on. They they said Vandy was supposed to stomp Hawaii. Hawaii was supposed to be one of the worst five yeah. teams in the league, and they won by seven points. Yeah. So my fourth leg was Vandy uh, covering, and oh, um, right. that was, that, yeah, but I, I was already dead. But yeah, that that surprised me. Uh, Maybe Vegas was on to something because I um, I didn't bet it, but uh, I think the over under was three and a half wins for Vandy, and I just you look at Vandy's schedule and you're like they they got five four or five wins easy. I felt like you know maybe they get an upset here and there something like that, like you know against Missouri or something like that, but um, maybe not. Well, right. Vandy beat <laughs> Hawaii last year, sixty three to ten. Right, right. I mean, like, there's no way Hawaii got that much better in, in no. good games. I mean. In Van in Nashville too, and yeah, which that I mean, they, how many people were there? Did y'all see this? I mean, I know the stadium's crazy, but even the stands that were open, they, I mean, it was empty. So, <laughs> well, I mean, the the like I said, the thing of week zero for me was the hanging billboard from cranes. Yeah. Did they not? Were they not? Ex, were they expected to complete that renovation? No. Or, 
No. So they no, knew. No. They, they knew all along it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't because that that's pretty bad if it was. But yeah, no. <laughs> hanging a scoreboard there is, is is I like it. I like it. Willie Gray, I think, is talking about that Jaden McGowan kid, the wide receiver. For that them. kid's a stud. Yeah. There's always one kid over there that that can can play. Let's see here. Uh, Jason Ray says, "Can you blame them for not going to see Bandy? Hey, you got to come out week week zero though for your team." You know, uh, Alex Waller says maybe Gators can beat Vandy this year. <laughs> Damn. I don't think By the so. way, that's a good that's a good thing for Alex to say there because I wanted to say it's only four days to go till Florida's zero and one. Yes, four <laughs> days, guys. So I, my friend is a Florida fan who um, I, I was I actually saw him this weekend, and he he's going out for the game, and he already really? placed he already placed a bet on Utah to cover. Oh man! No kidding. He he was like, "Yeah, we're gonna." What, get what is the spread, Jason? Six what and a half. Six six and a half right now in favor yeah. of Utah. Wow! With yeah. their third string quarterback playing, not even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that could be a factor, right there. That's, I mean, see, that I'm that wondering about too. that. Yeah, that's, I know. Because yeah. last year, what was the score? Um, Florida beat them. So I mean, Florida won. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like yeah, barely, know, barely. Yeah, but still won. And Florida was that. Was no, I know. Horrible, yeah. but I mean, I don't know. Did, I thought the whole time that Florida was going to get beat, but now that Cam Rising's out, I'm like, I don't know. It's it's a little different, so I don't know. And I hope they lose. Let me bring on uh, – you guys haven't met him yet, but he is the newcomer to UGASports.com. This is old Lance McCurley. Lance. What's up, Paul? Can you hear me? Yeah, man, I can hear Rest you just you guys. Fine. Yeah, good. This, good. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, well, I can yeah, hear you. Good. <laughs> good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, so Lance, meet the crew. So that's Jason. You know yeah. Jason, obviously. Yeah. But then you got Eddie from the A. We're not talking Atlanta. We're talking Ackworth. Then you oh. got Andy Stowe. Uh, there's they're two regulars, and then uh, yeah. we'll actually be doing a non-dog podcast soon uh, with myself and those two guys. So uh, they, they're here all the time. So you, you'll you'll recognize the faces. Oh, soon, Eddie, if this if this is the same Eddie that calls in a nine six to the ref, is that you? That's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard you many 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 mornings. I'm good friends with you. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Absolutely. So Lance, I think you called in because you wanted to put in, you, you missed it last week mm-hmm. and not to change subject real quick guys, but Lance wanted to put in his uh, Heisman pick and also his 14 college football. Uh, so do yeah. I, so do I when he's done, if that's okay. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't, him, but, yeah. I didn't right. have pictures down. I know you texted to me, Eddie, but I didn't put it down. So, so I'm going to go, I know I, I was watching. I was eating dinner right before I was watching. I'm gonna go, you know, if USC can run the table, Caleb Williams. Um, All right, obviously, yeah, good pick. Good pick. I like it. <laughs> That's. I'm just going with a safe pick. Just, but uh, 14 playoff. I'm gonna go Georgia. The SEC is gonna get two teams in with Georgia and Alabama. I don't think Alabama wins the SEC championship game. But then I'm gonna go. Ooh. I'm gonna go Michigan, and then I'm gonna go Oregon. Oregon to uh, to win the uh, the Pac-12 and kind of its last year, kind of run the table, beat USC out, beat Utah, and uh, have uh, the first Pac-12 team in since I think I believe it was 2016 in Washington. Yeah, but I'm gonna go Oregon. I think Dan Lanning and his uh, his uh, squad make a, a big leap in year two. I took Oregon as well. Yeah, I have them. I have them getting, getting in. Yeah, you Andy, just so, Andy, you just you just copied Andy's pick, so that's not yeah, very bold. It's all right. <laughs> no, no. So so Andy had LSU. Oregon, Georgia, Michigan, LSU. You've got Georgia, LSU, Michigan, okay. Oregon, Alabama. Yeah. So okay. You and you and Ben are the only two that picked Bama so far. Um, just saying there. It's not not bad though. It's not bad. What's what's the reasoning behind Bama instead of LSU? I think the Bama. Finds a quarter. I think Bama finds a quarterback. I just they're a lot deeper than LSU, and I think that this Bama team is probably going to be a little bit hungrier. Um, you know, after, people keep uh, saying that, Lance. People keep yeah. saying that. I know. I mean, who knows? I mean, according to someone on the board, they were going to run the triple option. You know, I, I, hey, I, hey, but Lance, let me yeah. ask you a question. Weren't they pissed off last year? And this, yeah, they were. we were all dead. I mean, it was over after Georgia beat them 33 18, right? Yeah, that is true. That is true. I would say LSU would probably if, – if I had to, like, substitute, I'd go LSU. Um, I just don't know if LSU has a, has enough depth right now, though. But, you know, who knows? 
Do you do you I think finding a quarterback costs them a loss, whereas LSU set, set at the quarterback position? Ooh, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know Bama's early schedule, so it may not matter. You know, they may have cupcakes too. I, I don't know. I'm not looking. They at got it. Texas. Just a question. Yeah, yeah. Te- is it yeah, Texas. That's Texas? early. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could. You know, if they struggle at the quarterback position, that's obviously going to be a loss. I think. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in two weeks, I believe it's in Tuscaloosa this year. Um, yeah. 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 But you know who know you know who knows what uh you know what this uh you know what some of the I don't I don't think it's going to be Milrow to be completely honest with you who do you all think it's going to be starting? Well, to that's what I was about to ask because there been any re- there's got to be some type of spillage out of Alabama uh, on this who who's the lead dog right here? Hey, hey who's who's the guy that calls in on Bill Bill Shank show um, from the Boomo Buck show? What's his name? Um, He's in oh, Alabama. Brent, Brent Beard. Brent yeah. Beard. So he yeah. said that it's going to be Jalen Milrow, but like they were talking about Dylan uh, Lonergan. They were saying he's yeah. like they like him a lot. They're saying that Lonergan like maybe the best pure thrower on the team. Yeah, I, I heard that as well this week uh, on an Atlanta news station that he was getting first team reps in practice last week. So yeah, so True I think Milrow will be starting for Bama. I think I think it'll start out with Milrow, and if he falls. They're going to make a change. Then Lonergan comes in, yeah. That Texas game may be, may be key, maybe so. you know. Maybe so. Yeah. yeah. Kind of keep an eye there. Our man Foster, he's got his, his ear to the ground, says uh, he's been here, here in Milrow the most. So, uh, Carl, man, I appreciate that, Carl. Yeah, hit the like button. Yeah, hit that like button. Let's show uh, let's show Roddy and the gang that uh, we get down here on Sunday nights, guys. Uh, let's see. Alex Walker would uh, like to add USC – Ohio State, Michigan, and UGA, two? Wow. Two. So both, wow. just like last year. And that's three Big Ten schools. Yeah. That's really right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You want to look at it that way. Yeah. Uh, that's tough. That's tough. Oh, guess who's starting at – I think he's starting at linebacker uh, for Bama. Tresman Marshall. Yeah. So good for him. Mm. Good for him. I know that uh, – uh, oh, goodness. Schumann put out a really nice post when he left and didn't have anything bad to say about him. So I hope that, I hope it works out for him over there. It just goes to show you though, the depth that Georgia has, if he's, he wasn't going to start for Georgia and he's now starting for Bama. That's how, how the t- times have changed. If someone right? would have told yeah. you that five years ago that a guy that yeah. could not play here is starting at Bama. You'd be like, you're crazy. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's something else. There's, there's no way. Uh, Fox, Said Bama's just uh, waiting for Julian saying he looked good last night. Yeah, they, might be. He's uh, he's their he's their five. He's their Dylan Riola. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Randy Payne, the man, the myth, the legend, says go dogs from Tifton, Georgia. Go. He says this every chat, guys. Go three and twenty three. That's his thing. I like that. That's three awesome. and twenty three. That's a good hashtag. That's yeah. his thing. Randy Randy started that I think on the POS. Uh, man, I think he said that the, on the night that Georgia won the second one. He came in here and said this exact message. I think he just keeps it in his notes because it doesn't change. It has the hundred emoji. It's got the three. I mean, it doesn't change. I like that, Randy. Hamilton says the greatest live show on YouTube. That that's that's so sweet of you, Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton's a nice guy. I know Hamilton. Uh, actually, he he dates my. <clears throat> wow, how can I even say it? He dates my wife's neighbor's daughter. No, my wife. That would be your neighbor, neighbor right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I left out. I left out, person. Person. <laughs> I left out a person. I left out a person. Yeah, my wife. Maybe we don't know, Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. My wife's parents' neighbor's daughter. There we go. Okay. I got it. Where we go, um, Lance? Before we uh, get you out of here, mm-hmm. unless you want to stay, you can hang out. No, I can. I, I'm free as long as my okay. power doesn't go out. It's about to storm here in Athens for. Uh, well. Tense we're going to we're going to switch our attention uh, to some of the questions over here in the chat. So, guys, if you have questions. Hey, can I throw mine out, Paul, before you do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my bad, Eddie. Yeah, I wrote it's you down, okay. too. I I'll need your four. Quick. I need your four. Well, can I do my Heisman first? Uh, my Heisman. Sure, Eddie. It's your show, baby. You do you. No, no, no. <laughs> I thought we were going in order. Yeah, you can you take your Heisman. Take your Heisman. Michael Penix. Okay. Ooh, I that. wanted to uh, you know what? I really wanted to go there, Eddie. I debated it last, so I'm not mad at it. I just don't think he's got the rushing yards. Um, so he, well, so I if mean, he going, had, he had the uh, close to the same amount of yards as Kalen Will Williams last year, just look, not as many touchdowns. Look, if you're going, so. if you're going Penix, though. I'm assuming, you know what assuming does it makes an ass out of you and me. 
Washington's in your final four. Got to be. You got it. Yeah. U- UGA, obviously, Washington. And I don't – I'm not picking a team from the West because I think they annihilate each other this year. I think Texas A&M, LSU, and Bama beat each other up, and they don't make it. So I'm not picking a team from the West this year. Hmm. And I'm picking Ohio State. I think Ohio State beats that demon, and they beat Michigan. And they, they get need to if Ryan four. Day wants to keep his job, I think. And I'm basing this next pick on Mason Smith being out next week, and that makes a difference. I'm picking mm. FSU. You're taking FSU over LSU next week. Yeah, and I think they make the Final Four because of that. How about – before we go to UT Martin, because I do want to get there, guys. I, how about LSU saying, hey, we tried our damnedest That's to awesome. find a Week Zero opponent. That is so – I Mason love the Smith. honesty. Dude, so I mean, awesome. yeah. We tried <laughs> – we pay a school millions of dollars to come get their ass beat in Death Valley in Week Zero so we could have Mason Smith play against FSU. They tried. Hey, I like the honesty. That's awesome. That's that's yeah. I'm I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess they thought it was going to leak out, so they were like, "Hey, we got to get ahead of this. Somebody is going to leak yeah. this that we tried and tried and tried to get a week zero opponent. Let's just go out and be you know forthcoming and be like, hey, we want Mason Smith.' And f- for what it's worth, I don't even know what they got him for a recruiting violation. I didn't look too much into it. it something, something dumb like that. Yeah, it was a he, like I think he took money for signing his name or something before like, before NIL started. So. Receiving improper benefits. Yeah, this is I, this is just so the dumb. NCAA saying, "Hey, we can't govern much, but damn it, we're going we're to keep get one this. of the top yeah. three players out of yeah. the Sunday night game, and you're gonna you're gonna talk about it because we still have some type of governance over these schools." It's I don't like that, man. It's asinine. Yeah, what, what good does that do the game? What good does it do the player? And it's right. it, it's a, it's such an archaic thing to still act like you can police somebody for their likeness, even if it was before nil was set up or, or whatnot. Like get out of here. Si- signed his name. Meanwhile, his teammate Harold Perkins is probably making over a million dollars. I would imagine. Sure. Yeah, Mason's probably making that too with nil. Oh, yeah. yeah, come yeah. on. So stupid. Um. I like this, guys, to kind of go into because October is a, a September, October ish. Uh, this first part of Georgia's schedule isn't the most fun. So, this is a good question from Craig Patterson. I haven't seen you here before, Craig, but that's a, that's a sharp looking photo you got there. It's a good looking house. Those are custom <laughs> cabinets back there. Yeah, custom <laughs> cabinets back there. Uh, you got money, Craig. I can see it. You can't hide it. Um, he says odds that BVG and Stockton both get more than 25 snaps before end of October. So are we talking combined? Yeah, that's what, that was my question. If it's combined, go, yes. Like yeah, 100%. No, no, that makes it too easy. That yeah. makes it too easy. Let's say uh, individually. Yes. Individually? 100%. 100%. Really? The end of October. Look who they're Tennessee Martin, Ball State, and UAB? Yeah. I don't know if Stockton will get uh, Craig, Craig did clarify. Each, uh, he said yeah. Each. Said each. each. Yeah. I think Gunner, uh, 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 BBG for sure. I don't think Gunner. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, think I agree. Good. I don't think Gunner gets there. I, I, I'm with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. he has too many. Yeah. I think he'll get I, Tennessee Martin. I think they'll both get maybe ten snaps a piece in Tennessee Martin. Ooh. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Either but, you think BBG gets ten. Hey, at least ten, and Stockton gets several. I, yeah, I, I think yeah, twenty, hundred percent, twenty-five each by the end of October. Because so. mm. that, Indeed. I mean, you gotta add Vanderbilt and Florida. Florida sucks. You'll get a lot of snaps in those yeah. games as well. So, <laughs> hey, we're clip. Hey, let me write that down. Oh, right game, now. I will is that game in Florida October? Uh, we're talking. We're talking about the whole fourth quarter when, when we talk about these. These reps, Tennessee Martin, yes, Florida. Even if you're up 38 nothing, I don't know if, if anybody's coming in until five minutes to go in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Look, who who was the last quarterback that was a third string quarterback for Georgia that got playing time under Kirby Smart with without it being some type of injury related, you're right? Um, I, yeah, I can't think. I mean, it, it would be a late game, it would be a, a blowout where it's the last series of the game, you know. Yeah. Last year, Carson Beck came in. Yeah, and, and then BBG yeah. came in like last se- series of the game. Yeah, he would. I mean, yeah, I mean Beck. Uh, Beck would get ten or fifteen, uh, you know, on some of the blowouts, and then sure. you know, and 
And then Vandergrift would get five or six. I mean, even if it's just handing it off, is he talking about throwing the ball or just handing? Uh, it says snaps, so yeah. it would just that be counts. all snaps. Yeah, because if that's the case, he'll get. That's, uh, that's been, uh, hey, I, I I hope his stat is correct because that means we're just kicking everybody's ass. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see here. Craig says uh, that was a work project photos, not my cabinets, not my circus. You can't fool us, Craig. You can't fool us, Craig. Somebody's. Somebody's, yeah. We see them. We see them. Uh, Kenny Berger says, uh, I think some people may be selling Bama a little short. They recruited nine five stars last year, and I believe four or five stars the year before. You got to have a quarterback, K- KB. Yeah. Am, I, am I right, guys? I mean – well, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, yeah, you have, like, you, have, you have such an unknown there, and uh, I just look at, you know, is the defense not going to be uh, as susceptible in the back end like they were in those big games that, that they were a year ago, uh, where, where you saw Tennessee, uh, you know, th- throw all day on them. You, you know, you saw LSU take advantage of them. I think that um, they have some, they still have some questions, and it goes back to your point. Good for Tresman Marshall, but, but it's exactly. it seems like it's a little different. You know, Tresman Marshall starting on defense at Bama couldn't uh, couldn't get playing time at Georgia. So, oh, was he third team here in Athens? I mean, I believe, well, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if he yeah. he wasn't going to play till the fourth quarter in, in Athens, so I don't know if it's mm. LS. Uh, I think you are right. Brock Brock got into a game, uh, I think, a couple times. I yeah, think he did. he did last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he did. He did. Uh, Taylor says, "Nice pod discussion. Go Irish." Hey Taylor, we appreciate that. Appreciate you so much. They are the uh, nicest people, but Notre Dame fans. The oh yeah, nicest. oh, yeah. oh no doubt, no yeah. doubt. It's and what because, a what a cool scene in Dublin. Yeah. Man. That was just so yeah. cool. It's really because cool. they're all Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua Hammonds. Oh, this is a good one, guys. We'll go around the horn here. I'll start with, uh, I'll start with the newbie Lance, right. and then we'll we'll go to Andy, EFA, and then we'll we'll go to Butt. Uh, and I, I see it. I see Dylan Bell at running back. We'll talk about that. UGA wins three straight quote from Joshua Hammonds. UGA wins three straight national championships. If blank end quote, Lance, you're on the hot seat. If Carson Beck can match the swagger and kind of, uh, can handle the, uh, pressure that, uh, Stetson Bennett had. Ooh. Keeps it simple. I like it. I like it. Andy, UGA wins three straight national championships if the defensive line can get good pressure up the middle and all the edges get some sacks because then the DBs will be a lot better and nobody will be able to do anything. Defensive line. I like that. Eddie from Ackworth, UGA wins three straight national championships if. Can I take the Carson Beck one step further? Absolutely. If if Carson Beck comes in and there's two minutes left in the game and we have to have a score and he leads us down the field and gets that, that's what we have to have from him. And we had all the confidence in the world that Steck could do that last year. Can he do that? Mm. Jason, but it's, it's going to happen. UGA wins three straight national championships if. Simple. Dominate the trenches, both sides yeah. of the ball. Yeah. Huh. I like all the answers. I'm not going to ask myself the question. So why not? Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> no, I'll answer it. I'm just kidding. So yeah, UGA wins three straight national championships. If I think I'm I'm going with Lance and Eddie because there's really only one position that is different this year. Yes, you lost guys to the draft, but quarterback is such an essential position, and I think it all kind of falls. And I don't want to put the pressure on them. Carson Beck. I think it falls on Carson Beck. If if he's able to go out there, like Eddie said, because there's going to be, and I've said this to some buddies of mine, looking at Georgia's schedule, there, there's just not a tough opponent until you get to Tennessee. Yeah. And that's a long time to play where you're not fully, I'm not going to say not fully tested because hell, Missouri might give Georgia a game again or Kentucky. But if you're just going through this motions, right, there's not, that big of a test for him until late in the year. We might not see if he's got that, you know, that moxie kind of 
I don't want to say the, the one that I've actually been looking at more, and I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it earlier, and um, I kind of dismissed it, I think, on a previous show. But you start really looking at the schedule now that season's here, and it's Ole Miss just yeah. because that offense, Lane Kiffin's familiarity with Kirby Smart, the overlap in that whole coaching tree. That could be a that could be a game where Ole Miss puts up some points and and all of a sudden that's the first test where Carson Beck sh- they should be able to go against that Ole Miss defense, but it could end up being at least for three quarters a shootout going back and forth, back and forth, and is he up for the challenge in that game? And that game is sandwiched in between Missouri and Tennessee, so right. it could yeah. be a physical game versus Missouri, and then sort of peek into Tennessee. So yeah, you're you're right. Oh, I like that. Oh, none hey, of us can mentioned I, can, I ask, guys. can I ask Jason a question real quick? Jason, and sure. your trenches thing. Was that more of a, I don't know if they can do it or they're going to dominate kind of thing? Or, or, is there I was going to. Mind? Yeah, yeah, okay. no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Going okay. to. Okay. And, and, but, but it's like if they, you know, if they don't, they're not. I, more so o- offensive line, I think they're they're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defensive, defensive line, line, a little bit of a question. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay. But, but honestly, it's just because we've seen such dominance when it comes to to, to Jalen Carter and, uh, and, the, and the other guys that have come through the program in recent years. Uh, right. You know, can they still play almost to that level? And I think if that's the case, they're they're fine. Yeah. But you know, it's a lot of new guys breaking in there, so you know, a lot sure. to see. A lot yeah. of hype. Uh, well, real quick before I go to that, what about the new OC? None of us said anything about Bobo. No concerns there. Zero. No. None. 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 I, I just I got to ask, right? I got to ask yeah. what the people want. Uh, Nazir Stackhouse, good player in my eyes. They're, they've moved him up into that uh, almost not, not going to say Jalen Carter level, but he's getting like first teams. Uh, you know, am I miss? I don't want to say he's not good, but do you see, what, Andy? You see what I'm saying? I'm with you because he hasn't actually shown. You see Jalen Carter, and you say <laughs> that guy is the best player on the field. You look at Stackhouse, you think he's good, but he's not bad. right. And I'm with you. That's why I say if we don't have that pressure right there in the center, and that's why I don't know if we do. So I think if we end up with that guy, I don't think there's anything they can do. So. But look, we might just be overlooking him because obviously some these these coaches see something in him. I think him Phil still had him. Phil still has him ranked like maybe the top defensive tackle draft eligible or top five. It was something I had the book. It's upstairs though. But, well, just look at look, I, I, Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, Jalen Carter. I mean, just is, it, it just is it one of those things? Or just hey, I think I think I think we see those guys and we see Nazir Nazir Stackhouse, and we're like, well, he's not those those guys are like once a generation right. type guys on a once a generation defense. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to be stronger there, right in the nose guard up the middle. We're going to be stronger on the out. edges this sure. year. That's exactly right. what's going to happen. Yeah, and I yep. think it's going to make the up the middle better. So yeah, you're right. right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Over yeah, under I mean, sacks. For, for the team. I mean Brett says, hey man, he's been overshadowed by Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter. I'm not I'm not throwing any shade at Nazir because obviously there's something I just haven't seen. I just haven't seen well, I don't think, I don't I think any of us have seen it because yeah, of right. what he said. There's a lot of other guys right. that have gotten the playing time. Uh question here, guys. We've seen it a good bit. Let me get to it real quick. Uh man. We gotta talk about Dylan Bell though. I'm I'm interested yeah. what people Say about yeah, him. so Swan Sullivan Nicholson, hell of a three, three name right there. Swan Sullivan Nicholson. I'm jealous. You want to trade names? Yeah, hell, hell of a name. Uh, says Dylan Bell at running back. Yes, there was some talk about Dylan Bell getting some snaps at running back. How concerned are you guys, Lance? I know you're not a fan. You're a journalist, so answer this a little bit different. But uh, Eddie and Andy. How concerned are you guys with this running back rotation? You have to, after hearing the news of Branson this past week, you have to feel a little off. No? Be Go ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead Eddie. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't know you were asking. Um, well, I feel terrible for Branson Robinson because I want to see Branson Robinson play. I mean, he's he's going to be the stud this year, and we were all looking forward to it after we did, especially in the national championship game. But I just keep going back to last year when we were all like, oh, my God, we just lost Nolan Smith in the Florida game. We're never going to win a national championship now. He was the leader on defense, and we just went out and won 15 games. We went 15-0. 
Kirby just seems to find a way to find guys to plug in. And we're so deep. And we don't know what we have in Roderick Robinson. But I, I told you guys, Roderick was my pick. He's going to be the freshman impact player. And I'm sticking by that. He's even bigger now. But we don't cast what we what we have. We haven't seen Andrew Paul either. So yeah, exactly. We don't know what Andrew Paul. But I, I'm telling you right now, Cass Jones is going to be the next Lad McConkey. He's going to bust onto the scene. We're all going to be like, oh, my God, this kid is unbelievable. He's going to be that guy. I'm just I'm, and and by the way, I think Jason Butt could get three yards behind this line. No offense. To this <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. I'd be lucky to get a half a yard per carry. <laughs> But I would say if I can get pause, if I can get a half a yard per carry, that says a lot about this <laughs> offense. That's line. the point. Where yeah. number one and number two may be the best line in the country. So it just yeah. I'm just you know, I, I hate it for the kid. That's what I hate, and I wanted to see him. I'm just not concerned, Paul. It just doesn't concern me. Any any concern over there uh in the Stowe household? Not really. Um, my concern is if someone else gets hurt, but as long as no one else gets hurt, I think they're fine. And I think you, you start getting some people back. But, yeah, as long as no one else goes down, no, I'm not concerned at all. I, I think, like I said, like Eddie was saying, I don't know, you know, the whole Mark Rick thing, we were so worried about everything. Mm-hmm. And now Kirby just – Well, yeah, like, yeah, if one guy went down for Mark Rick's team, you're like, oh, well, there goes the season. Yeah, there goes the season goes down, you're like, there it is. Yeah, and it did. That's what would happen. I mean, they could not mm-hmm. sustain injuries. And now it's like, oh, well, Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith's – killing it right now in the pros i mean you know they're braving about that guy and he went down still won the national championship so unless another guy gets hurt i'm i'm not concerned from the journalist side lance before i bring on the professor of useless knowledge uh <laughs> he i got a kick out of him i see him backstage uh lance from a journalist standpoint there uh should should georgia fans be worried here with the with the addition of dylan bell practicing a little bit at running back because he did it, he did it in high school. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. and then you lose Branson Robinson, who I thought mm. was going to really have a breakout year. So, me too. Yeah, mm. I think obviously the loss of Branson is is huge. Just because whoever mentioned it a second ago, I mean, he just showed so much promise last year, especially against Auburn, and then again in the national championship game. But I'm kind of agree with Andy. Like, unless another one kind of fall, kind of falls, I think that you know, the running back room at Georgia is definitely talented. And it's not as deep as it has been, you know, when, when you look at like, what was it, 2014, when you had, you know, Chubb, yeah, Chubb Michelle sure. behind, behind, you know, Gurley and, and Marshall. Um, and there's, but there's just a lot of questions right now, just with, you know, how Andrew Paul is going to do, you know, how Roderick Robinson, I agree with uh, Eddie. I think that Roderick Robinson is, is going to be a damn, a damn good player in this offense. And I think that he like maybe mid season, it depends on, you know, how, how healthy Kendall is, Kendall Milton, but I think that he may be the lead back by like midseason. So I don't think that there's like a lot to worry about right now. Um, I mean, does is Dejon Edwards fully healthy? I'm assuming I saw him at practice the other day practicing, but I thought I hope so. <laughs> you would hope so. I yeah. haven't. Yeah. But I mean, I'm gonna bring in the professor here, the PhD, the man, the myth, the legend. He says, "Look, guys." Faith family football. That's all I need. You know, that's all I need. I mean, that's a pretty pretty good start, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's about all you need. Um, what about this running back room, Doc? I mean, I've been asked about it a couple times this week, and my answer was kind of like, meh. I mean, it's it it's not good. And like Eddie said, it, it stinks for the kid because the potential was there. I think he was their most explosive yeah. running back. Like he's the guy out of the room, but that would take it 50 plus potentially. But look at last year, like Milton and uh, McIntosh. I think the McIntosh run against Ohio state was like the longest run of the year, 40 something <clears> yards. <throat> I guess not like you're depending upon those guys to, to go get you 60 or 70 and your best players are outside anyway. Right. Like lad, love it. Bowers. Like that's where you're going to be explosive. It's just, Hey, use the offensive line yards before contact going to matter a little bit more. You make sure that you have some level of consistency from just the running back standpoint and, and getting what is there. Not just don't give up what's, you know, don't give up the football. Don't, you know, take something that should be five yards and turn it into two. But the other part, like the part that really concerns me is at any point of it is now if you start having to play Andrew Paul and Cash Jones consistently, then how does that impact the passing game and the passing I'm game? Just calling? about to ask you that the pass protection. Because yeah. now Georgia doesn't use their running backs as much as like, some of the least in the Power Five in terms of pass true pass pro. 
but you know, it's it does it just does it impact the play calling? Hey, do I do something different because I I want to stay out of third and eight? Like if second and nine call is different because of I don't want to have to protect on third and nine, so I'm going to run the ball in second and nine kind of thing. Like that's the only thing that uh, kind of creep into that. But other than that, no, it's just not too not too worried. One one more goes down, Brent. You're gonna worry. Yeah, you got to. Uh, I mean, as long as it, as long as Kendall or and or Dejan plays, because like even if you look at the previous three or four years, it's been two guys, like mainly. Mm-hmm. Like there's four play, but in terms of the attempts, like for example, Branson Robinson last year had I think it was 68 attempts, and that's the most of any third back in like the Kirby era. Hmm. Oh, so maybe, maybe not so much to worry like, about as long as I mean, Milton can, can stay healthy. Yeah? Like one, as long as one of Dejan or Milton is healthy and can get the, you know, be the 15 to 20 touch guy. I, I'm not too overly uh, concerned. Well, Brent, what about your Heisman? Let me get you, let me get you down here. Hmm. I need your Heisman. And I need four college playoff teams mm, the heisman that's the that's the hard one uh I mean, it's it's easy it's going to be easy to go with kayla williams again because he's going to put up ridiculous numbers and they're going to have to score right Please uh, don't. but that's why, that's why i went with him <laughs> i'm i'm going to go with my fourth playoff team and i'm going to go just as a long shot mr jordan travis from fsu just to have <clears> as a just My because of the, head. I think he's going to have like the rushing yeah. plus the throwing kind of statistics. It's like a, it's like a uh, stereo from last week. It's exactly what I said. Uh, it just goes to show, Brent, that I, you know, I know a little bit about football. You know, it's... I'm really bad at picking stuff. I will say that, but... uh, Brent. You didn't have to say that. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> just rolled with it. Uh, hey, I did predict the Stetson would be a Heisman finalist last year, so yeah, I did have did. that one right. You uh, did. But no, okay, so Heisman, there's that. What was the rest? Your uh, four team. Okay, so just thinking more and more about this season, it has a 2017 feel to me. I have a goldfish not- brain. You're going to have to remind me of what 2017 was. Oh, come that on, was when, man. That was when – that was Kirby's second year, Georgia. Se- Georgia. Sec- I, should I say second and 26? I probably shouldn't say second and okay. 26. Okay, all right, come my bad. Come on, Paul. I mean, <laughs> good Lord. But not in the way you think, because I think this year will end how last year began. And that much like in 2017, when the master still beat the mentor, I think 2023 is master Kirby beating mentor Dan Lanning in the national championship Mm. game. Uh. I I think your four is Georgia, Michigan, uh, Oregon, and then FSU. And Michigan for the third straight year gets beaten the semis. (laughs) Wait a minute. Desmond Howard tells us Michigan is winning it all again. So I, I, I trust me. I don't listen to this. And, and, and the yeah. Joe Moore award again. I mean, right. Like, that, like, oh, that's fine. But no, I, I just, <laughs> I, I, it's one of those things where I, I think Dan Lane is going to be really good and you're really good in year two. And so, yeah. I think somebody has to come out of that conference mm-hmm. because they're all going to be too good. Now, granted, they might sort of cannibalize themselves, but I think somebody comes out of that conference and, and, just looks at the end. Now the interesting one is, and and I, Dan, I know Dan and I've talked about this, but Notre Dame is the potential because of who they play. If yeah, they went to, yeah. if they went two of those three games, no matter who it is. Yeah, they showed that schedule last night, and I was like, "Damn!" If they, like you said, two out of three, they get out of here, one loss. Like it's mm. going to be between them and a conference champ, a twelve and one conference champ for the fourth spot, and they're going to have wins over potentially Ohio State and USC if they win the home games. If they win those, that I don't know, man. I feel I, like they I, might be a lock if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Clemson, oh, yeah. yeah. They go to Clemson, so I mean, yeah, they got to go to Clemson. I mean, if you if you come out from all three of those, absolutely, you're in. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, if they go undefeated, it doesn't and matter. That's, and that's kind of why I went FSU because I could see FSU losing that first game, and then maybe running the table, and so they win at Clemson, but Notre Dame doesn't. So then, in the end of the season, it's. Hey, Notre, for FSU beat Clemson at Clemson. Notre Dame didn't. That's why we put them in. They're a conference champ. 
See, Brent Brent went way deeper than I did with mine. I mean, he's he's into week 10 and week 12, like strategizing what happens. I didn't go that deep. Uh, I'll tell you, there's one more person in the waiting room here. We've got five minutes left, guys. We're just going to go seven box here. I can tell you for sure he did not go deep on any of his picks. Ben, Choppy Bachman. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Uh, well, how are you doing? <laughs> well, no. So I had a family member's car break down, so I've been dealing with that oh, assault, okay. as I it's call like- it. So I- I'm currently in the car. So uh, – I'm you can try to multitask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't call the cops on me right now. Not, not good situation. But um, <laughs> I think last week um, I think last mean? week I, I had some controversial takes according to a lot of people. But I am I think I'm the only one here who's taking Penn State in the playoffs. Yes, yes. you still are. Yes. I, well, well, because Jason, with Jason's with me on the Drew Allar hype. So I am on the Drew Allar hype. I just don't I, have I, I'm not going to pick him to win the Heisman, but if he's a finalist, that wouldn't shock me at all. He's he's going to be one of the three or four most talented quarterbacks in the country. But I don't know if I trust the coach with him. But I'm still going to reiterate. I agree with Eddie, and I think Paul, and maybe someone. I, did, Brent, did you pick FSU? Because yes. I, I, yeah, I, I was FSU. I think returns the most production in the, in the country, and I think they beat LSU narrowly. Yeah. So that's why I have them. Yeah. If they just beat one of Clemson or LSU, I think they're in. Um, because they're going to want that league to get a team in the playoff. I don't think you're. A lot of people are predicting two SEC teams, two Big Ten. I don't see that happening. Um, I think the the committee is going to want at least three conferences in there. Um, I'm also riding with. A, I'm the only reason I'm picking Alabama. And I don't know if Lance talked about this earlier, but all mm. their big games are at home. That's the no. thing that, like, yeah. thing that, do do you really think LSU is going to beat them back to back and beat them in Tuscaloosa without a quarterback who's a Joe Burrow? Like, Dane like, Daniels is a good college good quarterback, but he's not a Joe Burrow. So that's why I think when you look at Alabama, every tough game is at home. And that's the only thing that when you look at Nick Saban, every big loss he has is on the road. Lost at Tennessee, lost at LSU, lost at a and I believe, that one year. He doesn't lose at home. It's like Kirby. Kirby never loses at home. So that's why I have them. And then I said I took Penn State because I think I trust Drew Allar more than I trust the other three quarterbacks. I know he hasn't played a ton, but I've seen that kid in high school was special and i've seen that roster has a top five pick left tackle has the best one of the best running back tandems in the country has a right tackle it's going to be a first round pick it's one of the best corners has one of the best linebackers i've seen that roster up and down i'm telling you they're gonna and they're also at home against michigan i said i was picking whoever was the home team between penn state michigan and then georgia has the georgia to me i don't see them losing on their schedule I, i i don't see georgia losing so those are my four Hey, Ben, before we let you go, because it sounds like you're in a tough spot, brother, and I, I just don't want to hold up. You do have to tell us if you're in the commissioning of a crime because you've looped us all into this now, uh, <laughs> potentially as accessory. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not in an actual crime. Uh, um, okay. I, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I, I, again, well, I, Paul, his picks are criminal. I mean, yeah. We can go that way. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure, Eddie, because well, we agreed on two of the like, picks. So I, I, I don't think it's completely criminal. He just, I just wanted to make sure, Ben, because uh, like oh, wait, I said, but Paul, I, I, don't I did need want to, get... to bring something up to you. Speaking of criminal, you remember earlier in the all season, you were very hyped for one thing the Swamp Kings documentary. I was. How trash was that? I didn't watch it. I didn't I mean, watch it. It should I have watched... been littered with criminal activity, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm one episode in, and it's just an Urban Meyer fluff fest. Yeah, apparently, Urban Meyer's PR team I had won't to be sign watching off on that, that then. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not watching it. What I will tell you guys to go watch though is uh, on HBO the BS High. Oh about, yeah, that's. I want to see that. I need to yes. see that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that dude yeah. right there is a character. Did you? Yeah. So you watched it? Uh, I've watched yeah. like clips of it, and I've I've started the first episode, but I've seen okay. the clip. I'm into the first half of it. That that guy is. He, yeah. You're being nice. That guy is a con artist. Wow. Dude, he, he straight up sits oh, there in front of the camera. He's, and he's oh like, gosh. he's like, look, guys. I did what I wanted to happen, and his eyes like keep getting bigger. He's like, because you guys are talking to me now. <laughs> it's like, what the? Hell? That's all. That's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's I want to see a, that. Not a not a very uh, fun place to be. And like, t- he kept telling kids like take out PPE loans to pay for <laughs> <his> fake school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. All right, this is a must watch. Out. Yeah. Oh, Didn't yeah. they play I IMG? Yeah, they yeah. Yeah. IMG on TV. That was what yeah. unraveled everything, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> um, all right, Ben. We'll see you, bud. Or not. Don't say bye. Whatever. It's cool. Um, hey, uh, He's Brent committing crimes. 
Huh? <laughs> he's committing crimes. I mean, I'm telling give him a you, break. When he said that, I was like, look, man, I, I have to make sure that we're all safe. I got to watch out for my boys here. Um, Brent and Lance, I appreciate you guys joining the, the craziness of the Sunday call-in show. I uh, hope we'll see you next weekend on the POS show for sure. On well, Saturday now. Yeah, it's on Saturday. We're switching up, baby. Get my yeah, Sundays film back. Film don't lie on Sunday now. Yeah, film don't lie will be on Sunday now. So um, is that live? Film don't we did. I, we might do at least one live. I know we usually try to do one live. I gotta, and find, I gotta find a night for the non-dog podcast for me, Andy, and Eddie. So I just I didn't know that was live or not. So maybe we'll do it Friday. Whatever. Um, hey, I, just real quick before Brent gets off, the film "Don't Lie" is just the best. Y'all are so good. I love that so much. I've learned more about football and watching those than anything I've watched. Thank you so much for that. It's great. Appreciate it. Looking yeah, forward well, to doing it again. Um, do you get paid for that, Eddie? No, it was free. <laughs> I was just, I was wondering if, if Brent had like slipped you some money. Um, no. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hype him up some more. Um, we'll see you, Brent. Lance, we'll see you too, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, Foster says, can I join the cat? Foster, you've been around for freaking three, four years, man. Yes, you can. The link's in the description. What are you talking about? Can you join on, the cat? Man. Yeah, come on, dude. Uh, LS. Now we're now everybody's buying into the damn film. Don't it's lie. True. Film Don't lie is great from LS. No, it's, it's an awesome series. Brent yeah. Rollins is like the smartest guy alive. I know. Mm -hmm. now whoa, mm -hmm. whoa. Wow. Let's come he on. Is, guys. He can come break on. down film. Like he really, he's good. Hey, you know what? You know what? Why don't you ask him if he wants to do the non dog podcast? He's the greatest <laughs> I mean, never mind. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm with him instead, you know, I'm sure he's got a few, right? <laughs> you know, just screw me, huh? All right. Well, <laughs> Um, I mean, after you first like, met a lot. Hey, can, can I make a suggestion, Paul? Shouldn't you call it PGOS? Because POS has another meaning, and it doesn't. No, that's sound why we did good. it. That's the that's whole exactly, point. Yeah, it's a really? It's is a it joke. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's a joke. Okay, I, I didn't know that. I did not know yeah. that. Okay, it's okay. The play on uh, it just being a total, you know, crap. Okay, um, okay, especially when Anthony whole... comes on, right? Yeah, yeah, I get dude. It. Okay, I, look I get it. I get it. Yeah. I look forward to that. Ben's hey, everybody click on Ben's profile so you can see what he's watching on his uh, YouTube. Click on that. He said, Paul is the worst. Make sure to click on that and see what he subscribed to. I, whew, I wouldn't do it around your family. You um, team <laughs> Martin Sky <laughs> Fox. Uh, before we get out of here, guys, I guess a cool thing about them is uh, – that was a weird is. Um, yes, it is was. Their quarterback – is a former Georgia State quarterback, Cornelius Brown. Uh, a couple years ago, he was the starter there. He's going to be starting for UT Martin. I looked up the rest of their team. They've got a pretty good defensive end. He had eight sacks last year. Uh, you know, and then they went, let's see, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Is that right? Seven and four last year. There are four losses, Missouri State 35-30, Boise State 30-7, to Tennessee put a smack into them, but they, Tennessee also gave up 24 points, 65-24, and they lost to Kennesaw State 44-27. So uh, I don't think we, – we had a uh, question in the group me, the, the, the co-workers group me about the spread, and Patrick Garvin's pretty good with this. He said minus 50. Oh, gosh. You think they're going to post a spread? They may not that, even post they, they post It'll be spread. like the day or two days before. Yeah, it'll be like okay. Friday night, yeah. Saturday morning. Just because, yeah, just because it's uh, – and then Patrick actually made this point, and I, I didn't think of it um, because it's uh, FBS and FCS. Those games typically are a day or two ahead of time. Okay. Yeah. Man. So he said minus 50. I don't know about that. But that's what we're well, looking wasn't at. Wasn't Samford – I think the Samford spread was around there, it like minus like 50. 50. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. yeah, and then, and then that game ended up being like what thirty three nothing. Thirty three nothing. Yeah, they, I yeah. would, I would take the under guys if it's fifty. Just from this clock running, Kirby's going to want to get out of there. No injuries. Also, it's probably going to be hot as you know what. Um, yeah, but that doesn't mean that the big plays don't happen, and you know Bobo yeah. and Beck are going to want to put up some points early. Fifty points. Do you think they win by fifty, Jason? They could, but that, I think that depends on. Uh, it, it obviously depends on if the defense pitches a shutout or, or holds into a say, field if goal. If the defense gives up a touchdown, that you have you yeah, got, you have no margin. Yeah, if it's fifty, uh, you're not betting that. No, no, it's that's just it's just not worth it. 
And it, and if it's 30, let's say 38 nothing at halftime, he's throwing all the second, third stringers in there, and you don't know what you're getting, right? And then yeah. they may give up some garbage yeah. touchdown, and we may not score. That's the problem. It's, it's going to be a practice. It's a lot. Half. Yeah. Yeah, Foster yeah. said uh, Jason's going to give us a spread Friday morning, negative 50, minus 56. Hmm. Yeah. I would, I would take the under. That's yeah. incredibly high. You're saying not, you would take not UT Martin. Right you, take, you would take UT yeah, Martin yeah. plus 50. Not plus the under. You take E2 Mark, right? Yeah. Isn't that what you mean? But I bet yeah. you the, the over under is probably going to be around the same because you would assume yeah, yeah, that UT so. Martin's not going to score much. So you're probably talking right. over under 60. Yeah. Either way, guys, this will be a game you can leave at halftime and then go hang out downtown and see what's uh, what's going on down there. Night guys, game. night game. What? It's a night game. It's like six thirty, oh, right? Six o'clock. Yeah, that's, that's a night game. That's yeah. So then o'clock. go. So then go downtown and and chill. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you chill downtown? No. Well. There's some downtown Come Athens. On, Paul. You get crunked. Come on, Paul. Yeah, there's some places you can chill down there. I'm not going to say where. There's some places that let you in for free if the game's still going on. I don't mm. know. I'm not going to let you know where, but I'm just letting you know. I think we know what you're talking about. There, there's some places you can go. Um, <laughs> so oh, with, that that being, with that being <laughs> said, guys, uh, thank you so much uh, for everybody that's joined throughout our off-season special of – uh, the UGA Sports Call-In Show on Sunday nights. Uh, it's been fun. Some nights we've come on here and we, guys, it's been the dog days of summer, man. And we've just tried to get by. And I appreciate Jason Butt so much for coming on with me every week. And uh, Ben, as much as I hate to do this, I appreciate him as well. And Eddie and Andy and everybody else that calls in, it, it makes the show go by a lot smoother and faster. And everybody in the comments as well. You guys uh, help us out a ton. So if you're looking for us next Sunday, we won't be here. That's because we switch over to the POS, the post-game overreaction show. So we will be live on YouTube, I would assume, if the game's going to be three hours long, Andy. We'll be here around 9.30. Uh, So come and join us after the game on Saturday. We will, And that show is for you to overreact. Okay, guys, we're going to overreact. You're going to hear some hot takes here. But that's what that show is meant to be about. It's not just a recap show. We're going to overreact about some some Georgia football and, and other football. So uh, any last words, Eddie or Andy? No. Go dogs. Let's get this done. Right. It's game week, boys. I mean, yeah. come on. It's time. It's fantastic. It's time. Uh, anything from you, old JB? Because I don't think you're going to be with us on the POS. You got editing to do, or, or are you going to be there with us? The, uh, I'll hop on here and there. Um, hey. Editing slash uh, the um, – what just happened? Yeah, right after yeah. the right after the game. Hey, hey by the oh. way, Jason, great article on the on the uh, wide receivers. That was awesome. Just yeah, I appreciate it. That that really makes you feel good in the wide receiver. Well, really, every yeah. single position. Though. I mean, it's kind of redundant, I know. I know. honestly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you're sitting there looking at each one, and you're just like, oh, well, this class is great. This class looks great. So yeah, but it's a matter I mean, of not re- missing. Yeah, wide receiver. <laughs> Wide receiver at Georgia traditionally has been well, that too, yeah, guy and, and nobody else, and we just kind of yeah. It's, it's interesting. Good. This is probably uh, mm-hmm. I'm definitely interested in Love It, like mm-hmm. you know, and McConkey too, for that matter. I mean, because you, Love It might actually be you know kind of like Pickens, where you're like this guy can be a, a one in the NFL. So I'll, I'll be interested to see how he plays out in the in this Georgia offense. But then you look at two, three, four, and five, and you're like, yeah, they got some guys. And, and Jordan, like you said, historically they haven't had that. Well, with right. the halfbacks being a little, you know, injured, do y'all think they'll start running, even give the ball to Lad more on on reverse sweeps, and even Brock Bowers? I mean, do you think they get? More I mean, I don't even ne- necessarily know, but I don't even know if it's like necessarily. You're like, how do we get the run game going? I think it's spread them out. Part of the ball. offense. I mean, I just think the offense. You know, you be aggressive and and you. You throw the ball. I mean, I think that's what Monken wanted to do. That's what Bobo's going to want to do, and Kirby's going to give him freedom to, to do it. Those quick screens where they dump them out really quick. Those that's are running. Run. Plays. That's a running play. So yeah, run. yeah. So, I mean, but all that said, I mean, they're going to use their weapons the best best they they feel like they can. And so, I mean, I, I fully expect this passing attack to to be be aggressive. I don't think there's going to be any. We got to you know enforce the run and establish yeah, yeah. the run. It's yeah, it's it's a new day and age, and, and Kirby 
when Kirby realized after those first couple of years that he had to catch up, he, he did. And I think that there's a lot of credit that should go with him for, for noticing that. And there should be a lot of credit given to me to end this show, guys. We appreciate <laughs> you so much. Sunday call-in show presented by UGA Sports. I'm Paul Meharry for Jason Butt, Eddie from Ackworth, and Andy Stowe. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Saturday after uh, Georgia's 1-0 and over UT Martin. See you. Good night.